The global economy is enthralled with the problems at the start of 2019, with another major economic crisis brewing in Europe. The growth of the continent has slowed practically to a standstill, and two of its four biggest economies are on the brink of recession. The Eurozone crisis has taken a significant toll, both economic and political, on EU member states, including the Union as a whole. The EU, one of the world's most extraordinary experiments in governance a union throwing together what is now 28 countries with wildly different cultures, to fight around a negotiating table rather than on the battlefield is under siege from within. Europe is facing economic crisis, immigration crisis, Brexit crisis, secession crisis, and rise of nationalism and regionalisms, and demographically, it doesn't look good. The debt crisis started in 2008 with the collapse of Iceland's banking system, then spread, primarily to Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain in 2009. It has resulted in a loss of confidence in European businesses and economies. The ECB is under fire from all sides for its incapacity to stimulate Europe's economies. The European banks are facing a make-or-break moment. European banks are in crisis for structural and cyclical reasons. Abraham Lincoln once had a very famous saying. He said a house divided could not stand. One must remember that the EU has initially been set up to mimic the US in its structure. But that isn't working out. That should be taken as a hint that the US isn't successful either. It is evident that we are moving towards a financial Armageddon that will shake the world to its core. The numbers simply don't lie. Call it a realignment, if you like, but in practical terms, it is the recognition that our path was an unsustainable illusion. We are but pawns in the giant game known as the global economy. The situation has become dreadful, and the numbers do not work. Borrowing money to simply pay the interest on past debt and negative interest rates is not a prescription that leads to economic nirvana and bliss. Brexit to the west, P-O-L-E-X-I-T to the east, G-R-E-X-I-T to the south. Full speed ahead with migration. What could be better than business bringing energy supply and demand together at any cost with the added benefit of denying Russia a lucrative natural gas market? The only problem is nationalism, religion, and culture get in the way. Welcome to Atlantis Report. The EU passed laws to make it legal for bail-ins. So if you have under 100,000 euros, you would lose 40% of your account. If you have over 100,000, you will lose 60%. The recession has left a legacy of non-performing loans on Italian banks' balance sheets. Policymakers in Italy understand well significance of correcting their banks' problems to boost a healthy economic recovery. Reforming the judicial and extrajudicial processes for recovering collateral offers the potential of improving banks' balance sheets and improving financial stability, not only by increasing loan collections directly, but also by enhancing borrowers' incentive to service their existing debt. A combination of market volatility caused by Brexit, questionable politicians, and a poorly managed financial system worsened the situation for Italian banks in mid-2016. A staggering 17% of Italian loans, approximately $400 billion worth, were junk, and the banks needed a significant bailout. A full collapse of the Italian banks is arguably a more significant risk to the European economy than a Greek, Spanish, or Portuguese collapse because Italy's economy is much larger. Italy has frequently asked for help from the EU, but the EU recently introduced bail-in rules that prohibit countries from bailing out financial institutions with taxpayer money without investors taking the first loss. Germany has been clear that the EU will not bend these rules for Italy. The Greek crisis is one of the worst in history, even in the context of recorded trifecta crises, the combination of a sudden stop with output collapse, a sovereign debt crisis, and a lending boom, bust. Furthermore, Germany's leading bank, Deutsche Bank, is consistently being exposed to be the greatest repository of corporate corruption since BCCI. Whether it be money laundering for Russian oligarchs or, allegedly, the Trump family, engagement in interest rate scams such as Libra manipulation, violations of U.S. economic sanctions on Iran, Syria, Libya and Sudan, among others, or the sale of toxic securities in the run-up to the 2008 financial crisis, Deutsche Bank has played a crucial role, and is now paying the price. Berlin has time and again been making an effort to find a buyer for the bank, but both Commerzbank and Unicredit have had a closer examination and ran for the hills as a result. 
The share price performance indicates that Deutsche Bank is an impending candidate for a bailout, if not total nationalization. It's not rocket science, ECB has screwed up all semblance of market pricing in the eurozone. What a surprise banks can't work out where to safely lend their money anymore and can't get a margin doing it anyway. They either lend to previously junk crap companies and prey, or they get to lend to AAA at negative rates and lose money. Some end up just paying the negative rates and slowly die. Retarded funny money policies do not fix the economy. How many times must this idiot in ECB screw with the market until people get the idea? The EU is about subverting nationalism and democracy. I do not think that nationalism or democracy is flawless, but the EU alternative is an unelected technocracy surrounded by a boneheaded bureaucracy full of sinecures, hardly inspiring. No wonder it started measuring the curvature of the bananas. Let it die a sudden death, leaving thousands of shocked bureaucrats begging on the streets of Brussels. The EU was never meant to unite Europe. It was meant to turn them all into tax slaves, worse than we are. The Greenies got control and went full socialist, and now, as Thatcher said, they're running out of other people's money. And bringing in hordes of low IQ immigrants to do the work. Just like Rome did with the same corresponding results. The global economy is enthralled with the problems at the start of 2019 with another major economic crisis brewing in Europe the growth of the continent has slowed practically to a standstill, and two of its four biggest economies are on the brink of recession. Europe, since the past year, is facing a lot of crisis, not just because of Brexit's case. Many of the countries are being touched by the present situation, and officials of various countries are in the hope of the situation to settle on a direct basis. Germany appears to have been negatively impacted by global legislative problems and potential future problems with foreign exchange. The car industry business, which amounts to a large piece of the assembling component, has receded consequent of an absence of worldwide interest and in development joined with problems over the outflows and administrative changes that have been obtained ultimately. As Germany is the biggest economy inside the Eurozone, this is a real concern for the EU economy, and this is the reason we saw the Euro weakening against both the pound and the US dollar amidst exchanging sessions. In conjunction with this issue, the Italian banks are also under enormous pressure. This implies the banks included will furthermore need to increase their capital sums, and this made multiple Italian banks lose motivation on their offer costs. Only Monte Dei Paschi di Siena has uncovered its financial record to the ECB with the others still yet to go with the same arrangement. Inflation is a central concern for any central bank. And with swelling having fallen since November 2018, this could dishearten the European Central Bank from rolling out any improvements to their current money-related approach. Yet in the event that anything this could cause euro weakness as it suggests that as swelling is decreasing, then this indicates that the ECB won't raise financing costs from their memorable low at any point in the foreseeable future. This evidently shows that the foreign exchange market will be affected in the days to come likewise. The entire issue here is failed socialism. For that is why these EU countries are broke. The pension obligations entered into the largesse from the government to the people is why these countries must be able to borrow for zero. So as to meet the obligations. The ECB acts in their direction. They are referred to, just as in the US, as unfunded obligations. Which suggests more money is needed. In reality, and identifying the base problem, the pensions are over promised. And the promises need to be reworked back to reality. The pensions are underfunded because they were over-promised by those peddling socialism. The euro is a means to enslave the European people. At that time, with the Nazi tanks, it did not work, today one destroys the European states with the euro. Europe is toast. I just don't see them pulling out of this QE nosedive, ever. By the time the member states cash the loan check, the ECB has already devalued its worth. It's just so blatant now there is simply no way to reverse it. The hubris of those bankers are just breathtaking when you have some understanding of what they're doing to the population for the advancement of the EU. It is a tax on everything forever, and the bankers just really don't give a damn. Globalization has been an extended crisis event, built by those who earnestly desire to establish global governance but know they cannot merely impose it without loss of societal order. They will continue ratcheting up this lengthy global crisis until the population begs them to resolve it. 
which is about now, we stand on the brink of the final phase, where they pull the trigger on a global financial meltdown to which they will propose a worldwide cryptocurrency of their own design, but produced via one of their proxies to maintain the fiction they did not create it, as the only solution. Along with cash, ban to prevent crime and terrorism, and a negative interest rate to control aggregate demand. Or to paraphrase Mencken, the whole aim of practical globalism is to keep the populace alarmed, and hence clamorous to be led to safety, by an endless series of hobgoblins, most of them engineered. Eventually, the EU will be folded into the Belt and Road project, and so the EU bureaucracy will survive. There will just be another layer of management over the EU. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.